Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and we welcome you to the Wednesday, April 1st, Calaveras Council of Governments uh, meeting tonight here at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. Uh, we'd like to start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Our first item is the consent agenda. The consent agenda items are expected to be routine and non-controversial and will be acted upon by the council at one time without discussion. Any council member, staff member, or interested parties may request that an item may be removed from the consent agenda for further discussion. Are there any items being asked to be pulled this evening? Mr. Chairman, I would request item three be pulled, just for some clarification. Mr. Chairman, Gary Caldwell, Valley Springs. I'd like to have uh, items uh, 2A and B, 4, 7, and 8B pulled, please, for discussion. All right. Thank you. All right. Are there any interested parties asking for any other items to be pulled? All right. Do we then have a motion to approve? Items 1, 5, and 6, and 8A and 8C under the consent agenda. So moved. Moved by Councilmember Ponte, seconded by Second. Councilmember Morris. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass is 6 0. Okay, the first item asked to be pulled by Mr. Caldwell, item 2A. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On well, 2A, uh, I'm uh, confused a little bit on, uh, first of all, the number of shelters installed under this uh, program. And I did want to point out a couple of things because uh, in years, and you can see in the memo, the discussion one to third paragraph, you can see the years of these projects when they're programmed that there is a potential of reversion of money back to Caltrans possibly, or back to the feds. And I'm concerned about that. And also, I'm having uh, some problems trying to figure out uh, on these charge slips um, how much each of the, of the uh, shelters cost and why the work is being done by the Public Works Department and not done by a private licensed contractor. I don't know if it was put out for bid or not. I, I'm not privy to that information, but All right. for I was wondering why for and how much item. each of the of the uh, shelters and the slabs that are under them cost. Because I'm looking at a, a spreadsheet, and you have it too, that seems to be backing up more than one item. It's the same spreadsheet. And it totals $90,000 if you look at the, uh, if you look at the total contract items, it says $90,000. And if I'm understanding this correctly, I don't see where this includes the cost of the shelter and bench itself. It looks like it only includes the installation of it which amounted to, and I went out and counted them, 16 nuts on the shelter and four nuts on the bench. Uh, this item was put together by staff member Melissa Raggio. Would you like to address? Yes, okay. Mr. Chair, I'd like to start, and then maybe Deborah can help me out more on the specifics of okay. the various uh, bus stops. Um, but the bus stops that are They did the installation, 
I went by one of the uh, shelters uh, on Visit the Lago on Highway 26, and there were county employees out there working on that. So I, I believe at this point, um, the information that I have available is that this is installation cost only, uh, that the equipment was purchased previously. Um, I would like to ask Deborah if she can help us out on the question pertaining to either it being public works uh, work or if it was put out to bid. Uh, we did do, and Deborah, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, three shelter projects and uh, a total of four bench projects, but that's something that I'd like Deborah to help me with if she doesn't mind. And I think, Gary, um, the cost of each shelter in its entirety, uh, that is information if Deborah has, I'd like uh, her to make available as well because of the different funding sources and because of the different phases of the project, that's how we've handled the total project cost rather than looking at them as the cost of each shelter. So I think that that's the best information that Melissa and I have available right now. So if Deborah is able to help us out, I would be sure. very, very appreciative of that. Well, the other th thing too um, is that uh, I mentioned about in the individual cost. And the reason I ask about that is that I'm looking at concrete a unit cost or estimate of contract items was 2,200 bucks a cubic yard for concrete. 2,250 bucks as I recall. And the other thing that bothered me was, I guess it's a bill from Public Works, I don't know that, it's hard for me to tell, that says that there was eight hours of inspection Did I miss it? Yeah. Oh, no, that wasn't the one I was looking. Anyway, it says eight hours of inspection, and I saw county employees out there working on the one at Visit a Lago and 26, and I'm wondering why are they inspecting their own work and charging, of course, for it. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Deborah Mullen, Public Works. Um, I understand Mr. Caldwell's confusion um, with the multiple funding sources, and this particular set of invoices is for one slice of the project. Some of it has already been paid, reimbursed, um, and more to come after this. So this is not a picture of the project, which um, was uh, five shelters and two sites in Murphy's that have two benches each. Um, of the five shelters, two were constructed, installed by county staff, uh, the road crew, and uh, quality control was done by uh, a regular inspector. And also, um, we worked with the, the building department. They were building permits for these. So they were inspected by other people, too. And also, uh, a Young Doll con uh, consulting group did the um, materials testing. So that's all as it is. And um, the three shelters in San Andreas and the benches in Murphy's were put out to bid, and George Reed uh, Incorporated did that work. I think they uh, did great work. And that uh, notice of completion is going to the board at the next board meeting. So. Um, Mr. Caldwell is welcome to come look at the project binder and get a, a fuller picture of the project as a whole with all its funding sources and all its phases. And the, the final uh, dollar amount won't be known quite yet. It's still the, because staff was involved in a lot of this, the um, timesheets haven't been uh, fully reconciled yet. So we don't have the final numbers on what each shelter cost. Okay. And I would just like to add that under the Thank you, Deborah. I understand you, excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman, is it okay if I ask her a question? Sure, go ahead. Did I hear you say that the county forces did do the work? County forces did the, the work at La Contena Plaza and on Blagan Road in Arnold. And two of the five? Two of, two of the five shelters. And George Reed Incorporated did three shelters in San Andreas and the benches um, and sidewalk structure in, in uh, Murphy's. Okay. And I hope everybody's had a chance to, to look at all of them. Um, the one in front of Murphy's Suites looks really good. And I think the um, 
the adjacent property owners are all real happy to have these uh, facilities and improvements in front of their businesses. Okay. And you will let me come in and look at the file? Absolutely. That will be a first. Thanks. No. Okay. <laughs> Is there any further discussion regarding resolution fiscal year 1526 approving the Cal OES allocation of 37,955,06 to the Calaveras County Public Works Department? Is there any further discussion on item 2B, a companion resolution 1527, approving PTMIESE funding in the amount of 1,374 for the bus stop improvements? I had, Mr. Chairman, I asked that, that be pulled, but it appears that it's related to the previous one. There, and so maybe correct. when I go through the file, I'll get this straightened out. Okay. I don't want to take your time anymore. Okay. What I'm asking for is, is there a motion to approve items 2A and 2B, resolutions 1526 and 1527? So moved. Moved by Councilmember Heminger. Second by Councilmember Cohn. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 6-0. The third item, or I'm sorry, item number three of the consent items was pulled by Councilmember Cohn. The minute order ratifying the contract amount number three of mobility planners. Uh, uh, my question is more uh, to clarify. In the staff report under discussion, it talks about conducting two workshops with the County Board of Supervisors. And then uh, in the amendment to the uh, contract, it also references two workshops with the County Board of Supervisors. But it was my understanding those were going to be joint workshops with Angels Camp City Council and Board of Supervisors. That is correct. Thank you for the cl clarification. Uh, we are moving forward with a joint uh, session between the Board of Supervisors and uh, the City Council, April 28th, I believe at three o'clock. So I would just like to thank both boards for welcoming us for that presentation. Uh, this was uh, drafted and negotiated prior to us having uh, confirmation that we would be able to hold those joint sessions. I don't think it affects uh, the contract in any way, the consultant is prepared to um, host and facilitate two meetings. And so um, I don't think the fact that it's a joint meeting is going to affect his relationship or the contract. Okay. That was the only question I had. Okay. Is there any further discussion on consent item number three, the ratification of the contract amendment executed with mobility planners? Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve. Motion to Made by Councilmember Ponte. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Morris. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved 6 0. <coughs> Consent item number four, resolution 1525, approving the LTF allocation instructions in the amount of 15000 for the contract amendment to innovative paradigm necessary to provide the County Public Works Department with transit staff augmentation services. Mr. Caldwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, my question, the basic question is, why does the Public Works Department need help in negotiating the contract with, with the operator of the transit system? And secondly, um, the increase. I, I love the, uh, the first $5,000 was a not to exceed amount. And I noticed that if you add the $15,000 that's being requested to that, you now quadrupled the original estimate of cost for these services, four times the amount. I noticed that the 15000 also says not to exceed. Well, that's become a joke. I mean, if you can exceed the 5000 why can't you exceed the 15000 Why even bother with that language? Okay. And, and I don't understand, once you negotiate a contract with a consultant, you know, you would think that you've worked out all of the services that you're hoping to get provided and for the amount of money that ultimately it will cost. Thank you. Okay. Um, in addressing the, the not to exceed, I think the, the comment or the, uh, the statement of that being in the contract has to do with the fact that the board had approved the original amount of 5000 and it was not to exceed that amount. Any increase beyond that would have to come before the board for future authorization, which is what this item is, is in response to. My understanding for this item is that the original $5,000 of consultant work provided a significant benefit to the, count, to the county's public works department in negotiations with 
innovative or with innovative paradigm on their professional contract work with the transit operator and they recognized and respected that the consultant had more to bring to the table and it was a public works request to have the additional fifteen thousand dollars of additional consultant um, support services to assist them in continuing the negotiations and concluding those negotiations and it has an additional scope of service beyond the original scope of service that was done under the original five. Um, this item was put together by Melissa Raggio in response to the Public Works Department's request. Melissa, do you have anything to add to the request? No, I would just Mr. Caldwell. Mr. Chair, do I understand you to say that uh, Public Works could not negotiate the contract themselves? I did not say that. Oh. What I said was Public Works requested the assistance of Innovative Paradigm in negotiations for this contract as the experience of Innovative Paradigms gave them a much better seat at the table, as it were. And that was how it was explained to us um, in previous meetings, that yes, the Public Works could negotiate the contract, but they felt they would do a much better job of it for the county if they had innovative paradigm assisting them in the process. Hopefully this assistant that's going to cost $20,000 is going to negotiate a contract that will save them at least $20,000. If it's my understanding, I believe we're talking about a million dollar plus contract, so $15,000 to help them do a little better job I think is, is money well spent. And the 15000 is for additional assistance? Additional consulting services. Why isn't there an amendment to the contract then if they're going to ask for additional assistance? to go with the request for the money. There was an amendment at the last meeting, March 4th. The council's okay. already approved it. These are simply the allocation instructions to pay the consultant. Okay. Right. I'm sorry I didn't hear that. The Go ahead. The, 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 the contract amendment came before the council at the March 4th meeting. They approved it. So I'm following up with allocation instructions oh. to pay. The contract amendment was executed without the money to back it up. Pay for it. The council provided direction to approve the contract amendment. Tonight's action is to approve the funding to pay for, for that contract. And no invoices have been submitted to the company. Okay. And that's a typical process for us is to get approval for contracts and then we follow up in a secondary action requesting allocation instructions authorizing the payment. Towards Thank you, Mr. Okay. Is there any further discussion regarding the approval of Resolution 1525 authorizing the allocation of the LTF funds for 15000 to assist the Calaveras County Public Works? Is there a motion to approve this? I would so move. Moved by Councilmember Cohn. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Heminger. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 6-0. Item number seven, resolution fiscal year 15-24, approving a contribution to the statewide local streets and roads needs assessment in the amount of $337. This amendment item was pulled. Mr. Cobo? Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, during my 13 years as public works director and county engineer in Amador, uh, I was a director of SEAC statewide uh, for six of those years and it was about every other year we we put together or asked a consultant actually to put together a needs assessment and the purpose of it of course is is probably indicated by the name of it is to justify to the legislature and to Congress that California needs more fuel tax money and more road transportation road and transportation funding and this is a small price to pay as a contribution toward that end, I think, uh, for Calaveras County to contribute its share. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Is there any further discussion regarding the action to approve a regional service transportation allocation in the amount of $337 for the statewide local streets and road needs assessment? Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Moved by Councilmember Ponte. Second the motion. Seconded by Councilmember Kearney. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six up. Mm 
correspondence. We have a letter. Caltrans to Calaveras County Public Works read a request for a one-year extension on the Cal OES service funding and informational item. Uh, Mr. Caldwell, you ask that this be pulled. My question, I think, is an obvious one, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at this uh, grant was uh, from fiscal 11-12, so we're already into it almost four years. And I'm wondering why is there another extension, I mean an extension request after all that time? What's the reason for the extension? This item was addressed to Mr. Packinger of Public Works. Mr. Packinger, do you want to address the, the timing of this extension granted? Go ahead. Deborah. Oh, I was, oh, was Robert Packinger. Um, the, the answer, I'm so, uh, maybe Robert should have done this. Um, we ha it hasn't been done. We still want to do it. Um, we are preparing a, um, an RFP for this, and we've been researching the different kinds of uh, bus stop lighting, solar solar powered bus stop lighting, and we've. Um, decided on a on a product and we'll be uh, going out to bid for someone to install that and looking at the the permits for uh, those that will be located on state highways and um, it hasn't been done but we still want to do it we don't want to lose those uh, funds and um, there's some interesting technology that we can uh, put to use in our bus stops Deborah, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the installation of this was contingent upon completion and installation of the bus stop shelters. You're sort of doing these things in phases? No, okay. No, these are separate from the bus, the bus stops, the shelters have solar lighting um, as part of it. These will be for separate standalone places where there's um, no shelters, and a lot of the shelters need repair of their, uh, their solar lighting, but this will be poles and, um, so that when someone's standing at a bus stop, the bus driver will be able to see them and it'll be a little add to the security of the location. So this is separate from the bus stop improvement project. Okay, thank so, you. And Dara, I just want to clarify that the $36,697 is to be concluded by July 31st? Yeah, um, we expect to be, we had requested a one year um, extension of the, the funding but put on the form that we expect to be completed by July 1st. So they just gave us the extension to July 1st with the caveat July that would be July 31st. Yes, right. sorry. Okay. Um, we can extend it again, but I, I, I do hope to be completed by then. I, I will note that in the Cal OES letter, they actually gave us till 2,105. <laughs> but I think that was probably a time. Plenty of time, <laughs> I won't be there. <laughs> All right, thank you. Is this was an informational item only. Is there any further discussion on the Cal OES notification of extension approval? I, I do have a question. Um, Deborah, is this uh, is the San Andreas location out here at the government center part of the project? Do you recall for the lighting? I think they have lighting that works. I'm not certain, but I do recall that this is an issue, especially when we get out of this, this meeting, that it's quite dark um, yes. there. And I might take that up with the um, admin see if we can do something there but yeah we have the bench and we have the shelter yeah. and the um, the shelter has tree overhanging it and that might have something to do um, with the lack of light okay so. I just know it was a public comment here a couple of meetings ago yeah, I so remember. Yeah. Um, I just I think it goes and I think to there's show other the locations of this project. Yeah, where it okay thank you any further discussion of uh, correspondence 8b Okay. Moving to the regular agenda, the public comment uh, opportunity right now, five minutes per person. Comments shall be limited to items of interest to the public that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. Any interested public members addressing items not already agendized on the uh, agenda this evening? 
Seeing none. Action uh, requested for an open public hearing, agenda item number 10. Public hearing for unmet transit needs. Uh, Amber, would you like to introduce this item? Sure. Um, before I get started, I'll just point out a couple of mistakes on the date. Here it should be April 1st, um, 2015, and the second paragraph in the staff report. Also, the March 5th, 2014 should be um, this evening, April 1st, 2015. Just wanted to clarify that. That was her April Fool's joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, as the Regional Transportation Planning Agency for Calgary's County, the COG is required to administer the Transportation Development Act. Uh, TDA provides two main sources of funding for public transit, the local transportation funds, which is a quarter percent of the statewide sales tax return to the county, which was collected, and then the state transit assistance, which is derived from the sales tax on diesel fuel. Uh, the TBA legislation requires that each year on that transit needs hearing be conducted to collect feedback on existing transportation services provided through the Transportation Development Act in here in Calaveras County, that's Calaveras Transit. The COG offered residents an opportunity to provide feedback at the March 17th City Council meeting um, this past month and then also this evening on, during this public hearing. Um, additional input throughout the year is received through on the transit need survey forms, which we have on our website. Um, we also work with Calgary Transit to post on their um, buses and work with the Social Services Transportation Advisory Council um, to get them distributed throughout the community and collect those throughout the year. We also receive um, input through email and phone as well. Um, all comments received throughout this process are reviewed by the SysStack. And then um, COG staff then develops a report of findings presented to the COG board uh, who adopts the findings and then we submit the report to Caltrans in August. Um, I guess that, this, that was a really quick overview of the process this year. So we'll be bringing back a report after um, oh, well, collecting all the input from the community. So at this time, I'll um, give it back to the council. For okay. So my understanding for this evening is we're opening a public hearing for additional public comments on the unmet transit needs. No response this evening will be made regarding disposition of unmet needs. Those are just to be gathered as part of your summary that will be presented in a report at a future council meeting. Okay. okay. At this time, I'm going to open the public hearing regarding unmet transit needs. Is there any member in the audience uh, who would like to address us on the unmet transit needs? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. And I believe that's all we had to do. That's it. We will return. Okay. Action item number 11. Announcement of proposed grant awards totaling 743319 for the City of Angels Camp, County of Calaveras, and Common Ground Senior Service. This is an informational item. Uh, presented by Melissa Eats. Great, this was just an opportunity to celebrate the city and the county for the award of these grants and I think to um, thank Caltrans for funding these opportunities and their continued partnership. So we received a total of 517,000 in grant awards for the member agencies. Uh, we provided uh, grant assistance and also evaluated the FTA grant for common ground uh, they were awarded 225000 for the Senior Streak Program. Uh, so we're excited to begin working with the local jurisdictions to meet the conditions of their grant award and then move forward with those uh, grants and projects in the, fiscal, in the next fiscal year overall work program. So congratulations to the city and county. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Agenda. I'm, yes. I did... Uh, I had a question which I think Melissa explained really well asked about the senior street program and how that integrated with our bus service, with the duplication, complementary, and got into a discussion of other services. And which explained to me was real helpful, Melissa, if you want to. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think uh, the Silver Streak, and I'm going to do my best. Um, Amber knows a lot more about the program than I do. But this is an extension of uh, services that are provided by Common Ground currently in Amador County. Uh, Common Ground provides services in multiple counties within the foothills, I believe, Tuolumne, Amador, and Calaveras. 
And so they have written this grant as an extension of their Amador County Services. Their goals and objectives are to acquire uh, vans and I believe a small bus. Uh, they do have a small amount of operating assistance. They're looking at computer equipment um, and uh, GPS capabilities or uh, demand response capabilities. And their goal will be to provide demand response to seniors. And so that's how they plan to work, I believe, in concert with what Calaveras Transit does. And I think that's something that we've often talked about at this board and with Calaveras Transit. You know, the demands on the transit system are pretty extensive and the expectations of the ridership are high. And often a public transit system can't be all things to all people. So I think that this is a great opportunity to sort of enhance the service that they provide and that they provide very well, which is a fixed route service um, and you'll know the areas when we look at our quarterly reports where Calaveras Transit is really succeeding. Oftentimes where they struggle is when they're spread too thin and that's to um, provide uh, service to very geographically isolated areas that make it inefficient for buses to access. It's when they're working with um, a sensitive need population um, and it's difficult to provide a high level of service as a public transit system where Common Ground is potentially a nonprofit might have a little bit more mobility, so to speak. Um, we also wrote the opportunity for a mobility manager. So Common Ground isn't the only nonprofit agency that's providing other transportation services. One of the things that we do with the Coordinated Human Services Plan is bring together Calaveras Transit and other nonprofit agencies um, and social service providers who provide transportation for their clientele. So if a fixed route public transit service isn't the answer to them, um, that there are other programs through the county that they might be eligible to be a client and then receive transportation services. Um, one of the areas that we often hear at a county board of supervisors level is a need maybe for veteran transportation services. So I think it's looking at those special interests, knowing that Calaveras Transit can't be all things to all people, and then trying to find creative ways uh, to work with those groups and coordinate them. That's our hope for the mobility management position. That will be a contract position, and we're exploring how that relationship will move forward with the, with the county in mind as we do that. Um, so I think it's a good opportunity for both. Um, and then I think if you would like any more information about the type of service that they plan to offer, I would just see if Amber has any more information to add. You did a pretty good job. Okay. I don't know how much to add unless you have any specific um, questions, but just to reiterate, you know, Common Grounds really is to supplement, you know, services, specialized services that transit can't provide, but they really do want to work with transit to make sure they work in concert. So if there are areas that transit goes, they can help transport you know, people to bus stops and locations, especially when transit goes um, to stop in. Yeah. And I think that is a really important point. I think that's where uh, the COG has sort of um, set the example um, and the requirement that we really work towards convening these groups, that there are a lot of resources, there are a lot of tools, and that this is an opportunity where it's not taking service away from Calaveras Transit, it could be enhancing it by getting more people access to the service that they're providing, for example, down to Stockton. So I think that there's plenty of room for complementary efforts and partnerships, and I think that it's um, a success for this board just to be able to convene and facilitate those partnerships. Any further questions? Good okay. job, and I think this will be a great service Mr. to Caldwell. help supplement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gary Caldwell, Valley Springs. I agree with Council Member Heminger. I, the first thing that jumps out at you is why isn't this service being provided by the transit system? And I think it was well explained by Executive Director Eads here. The question I have uh, in addition to that is, um, the purchase uh, of the minivans, the small buses, and then it says 49,000 in operating assistance. What happens with respect to operating assistance or the operating costs? How are they to be borne after the $49,000 runs out? It's my understanding that uh, Common Ground is well aware that this is a one-year program. There's an opportunity for them to reapply for funding for multiple years. Uh, but the FTA grant program changed from a multiple three-year program to an annual program. And so um, that is understood and known by Common Ground. This reminds me of the COPS funding out of Homeland Security where, where you get 
deputies, you know, paid for for a certain length of time, and the money runs out, and pretty soon you got deputies there you can't pay for out of the normal budget. Um, and that was my concern here, is that you're liable to be sitting uh, or have a bus sitting out there and not moving. And by the way, if they fail to secure operating assistance in the following year, you said it's one year at a time, what happens to, as far as ownership of the buses and the minivans? What happens to those? And Amber, you can jump in, correct me if I'm wrong, I, don't, I need to be corrected, but it's my understanding that the buses are owned by Common Ground. They were eligible under the federal program to apply directly to Caltrans. So they didn't need the uh, support of the Board of Supervisors or the COG Board as the governing agency. All they needed was um, verification that this project was provided for in the Coordinated Human Services Transportation Plan. So they are an eligible applicant as a nonprofit agency in the county um, as a standalone agency. So they will own, operate, have the liability, the insurance, um, completely independent of the county or the Council of Governments. We had a similar program um, in Amador County that uh, we contracted with a social service agency to provide transportation for uh, disabled uh, people to go to work and to go shopping and go to um, classes that they were uh, receiving and uh, seemed to fit with our transit system over there apparently it doesn't fit here but that sort of thing and it, I believe that Common Ground is the recipient agency. They will be working directly with FTA, and the county and the COG uh, would not be involved in that relationship. So that's my understanding. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any further discussion on agenda item 11? Okay. Item number 12, a minute order approving the revision to the fiscal year 1516 to 1718 programming necessary to obligate the fiscal year 1415 uh, CMAC funds to the Angels Creek and State Route 49 bike and ped projects in the amount of $1,118,882. Uh, Melissa Eads, this is your item. Great. So I'm happy to bring this item back before the Calaveras Council of Governments. I'm sure you're all very aware, I won't reiterate the history um, that began with our three-year call for projects in October of 2014. Most recently, you approved programming uh, for fiscal years 15-16 through 17-18 for CMAC, RSTP, and LTF. We were really excited about that process. I think we were happy about the projects that we had prioritized and identified. Um, it was at that point that we were made aware by both jurisdictions that their current year apportionments in CMAC, congestion mitigation air quality funding, would not be able to be obligated within the year programmed. So we've talked briefly about the need to uh, reprogram those funds. Our options were to explore um, our relationship with SJCOG, because many of you are aware, the reason that we have so much apportionment in these fiscal years is because of the exchange agreements that we've negotiated over a three-year period with the San Joaquin Council of Governments. We've historically loaned out our apportionments on an annual basis and then realized a lump sum repayment. Um, that's been a really beneficial relationship to us because we've been able to advance larger projects. We've been able to pool apportionments and our apportionments are about 383,000, I believe, a fiscal year. And then we've been able to pool those and then realize maybe a million dollars within a fiscal year. That's helped us deliver the 1226 project. It's helping us advance and deliver the Angels Camp Murphy's Grade Road project. Uh, that, re that relationship has been very beneficial, but one of the cons of that relationship is that we are sending our dollars outside of the region rather than putting them to work in our region. And I think often the council has said, it would be nice if we would start positioning projects and lining them up so when these opportunities arose and a project fell out, we were able to keep the funds within our region and still protect construction dollars down the road. Uh, we've worked with the city and the county to identify a way to protect their current funding. Uh, the county has current funding on the Murphy's Grade Road Improvement Project. I'm sorry, the city has funding on the Murphy's Grade Road uh, Improvement Project, and the county has funding on the Mountain Ranch Road. Uh, we don't want to jeopardize those funds because of the current project delays, and so we've been able to identify a solution whereby we uh, program 1.18 million in CMAC funding, 
Uh, that is provided for you in the minute order as attached towards the Angels Creek uh, bike and ped and State Route 49 gap fill project. What we're able to do is um, combine those projects that you previously approved in future years uh, just a few meetings ago and pull them into one project. I think it's going to allow the city greater flexibility as they deliver um, and advance in the early stages of project development for this project. The city has submitted an application for the uh, Angels Creek bike and pet improvement projects. So you'll see the various phases uh, that they have planned to incorporate. They've also done um, the air quality uh, cost benefit analysis, which is required for programming. Uh, the county has had an opportunity to review this strategy and supports um, this strategy is recommended. And for your information and a side-by-side -side comparison, I did go ahead by fiscal year and map out the changes for you so that you know fiscal year by uh, fiscal year and funding source what we've gone ahead and modified. Uh, but if we take a look at the minute order, I can walk you through some of those changes. Um, in fiscal year 14-15, you'll see the changes that we just recommended for CMAC. We're over-programmed 160000 What this means is I'm over my annual apportionment by $160,000. Caltrans headquarters has reviewed this. They've given us the okay. They've said that this looks like a good project. If the city's ready to obligate and deliver, we want to support it and we're going to allow you to over-program. So I think this is just an example of how we can be rewarded as jurisdictions for advancing and delivering projects. Uh, that change moves the Mountain Ranch Road projects, uh, 638000 and 391000 We've been able to add and secure uh, future year programming for that. So when the county is ready to deliver those construction dollars, potentially in 1718, they will be able to advance future year apportionments. So um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that in 1718, if the county needed a million dollars to deliver that project, they're ready to construct. We would be able to work with headquarters to advance the upcoming year's apportionment to get that project on the ground. Um, fortunately, because of the position that the county was in, they were giving up the 391000 they had programmed in 1516, which made a perfect hole for the city to slide right into so that they didn't experience any further delays on the Murphy's Grade Road project. They feel that they will be ready for construction in 1516. So I think that that offered a great partnership opportunity and uh, just afforded everyone uh, to meet their project needs and their project schedules. Overall, our CMAC project uh, within the uh, STIP cycle, F-STIP cycle, is over-programmed by $133,000. Uh, we have tentative approval to do that. But if you look, uh, we've tried to sort of balance that out. We're leaving about $33,000 of RSTP. Should there be any ineligible um, CMAC expenditures, that funding will be there. Um, any cost under overruns, that funding will be there. And then I'm also recommending that we leave the 2% bike ped, uh, we're able to meet the city's needs with the 1.1 million. That'll allow us to uh, bank the 2% bike ped to the tune of 67,000. It helps me offset uh, the total programming balance. Um, and then I think it also affords us the opportunity that if we get through the cycle and everything goes as planned, then we might be able to do another call for projects or make some decisions about utilizing that funding for ATP matches or uh, project study reports for active transportation programs, other ways to help the city and county prepare for project delivery. So um, I hope that was a good explanation of all the things going on uh, in this uh, action that I'm requesting. But I would request that you support uh, the revised programming. Uh, just one other caveat is that the city is moving forward. The city council will be reviewing this application and considering this item at their next meeting. Uh, because of the deadlines, I need to get this information to headquarters tomorrow so we can get an amendment and the city can move forward and obligate those funds. Uh, part of the risk in not supporting this is that those funds are sitting on the table and that there is threat of rescission. We don't want to lose our obligation authority and we don't want to lose our apportionment. Um, if there isn't a rescission, uh, then we aren't in jeopardy of losing our apportionment, but um, obligation authority gets tricky. And uh, I think if the city or the county has a project ready in the queue, that it makes good sense to support it. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. 
Um, I would also like to add, I did hear from uh, council member Amanda Fallendorf with the city council. Um, she reviewed the application. She's supportive of the item, but had an interest in recharging stations. So as the city looks at the environmental and design of the old pool facility, uh, we talked about the inclusion of bike uh, facilities, a park and ride facility, public restrooms. She thought that that would be a good location for the city to consider recharging stations. She asked that I provide that comment to you. But with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Council? Very thorough. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> well, I, I spent a lot of time reading through the staff reports and trying to follow it, but uh, uh, Melissa, anyway, your, your, five, your five minute oral presentation really uh, made it all uh, come together for me much, much easier. Thank you for that. And I, I'm just pleased that we have these various options to turn to when you know, the best laid plans don't work out. That we, that we can substitute different projects move the priorities around a little bit and still not lose any of the money. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of it to Dave and Melissa, whoever worked on this, did a good job. I think it's a great example on the importance of planning because these are the opportunities that we look for. You know, the city had this plan on the shelf. It was supported by the COG. It was supported by the city council. And so I think it's just a great opportunity to then turn to our shelf and find a way to put these dollars to use. So yes, yeah. I agree, Wes. Thank you. Any further comment on agenda item number 12? The action requested is to approve the minute order, which is the final uh, spreadsheet page as revised programming. Mr. Caldwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gary Caldwell, Valley Springs. Uh, I like uh, the benefits of programming as recommended, particularly the, the one that talks about protects the investment in the Calaveras County region. Um, three years in a row, as I'm sure those of you who've been here a while, remember that uh, fortunately your executive director was able to loan the money that was not going to be utilized to San Joaquin Cog and it's being paid back and otherwise you were going to have it revert and you're going to lose your obligation authority which is the same situation you're backed up against the wall in here Correct. and the beneficiary because the county and the city can't provide the projects as, as uh, intended the beneficiary, of course, is the City of Angels. They're going to get a million plus to do the uh, bike and pedestrian projects. That's great. Uh, that may not be the council's first priority, but it's going to be used in the county of Calaveras. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that when I was uh, branch chief at Caltrans for local assistance, we always encouraged the uh, councils and the LTCs to utilize the monies that they were that they were allocated and and uh, obligate those funds and deliver the projects on time because Congress wants to see those monies spent the state legislature wants to see those money spent they don't want to see them going back they don't want to see a reversion like you had on um, the intersection of 1226 uh, a year ago or so where you uh, did the you didn't, but the county did, the unpardonable. They took and let federal money revert back to uh, Caltrans and took RIM money and inserted that instead. You just don't do that. You don't give away federal money or state money and then backfill it with local money. And so you're not doing that this time. That's good. Uh, of course, I, I don't want you to see, I don't want to see any reversion of of any of this money either but let me make a couple of suggestions it was suggested that um, well let me go back to 1226 intersection there's room money in there now actually I'd like to make sure we stay on this agenda item okay this is having to do with this okay money All right. the CMAC money CMAC money was reverted there and because it wasn't used in a timely fashion by the county so they put in rim money. My suggestion, maybe you could reverse that. Maybe that rim money can be pulled out and this CMAC money, some of it anyway, be put into that project. And the other thing I would suggest on that project with respect to CMAC money is about 90% of the project is to be funded with CMAC money, or at least originally thought that way. Um, 
I can tell you that no matter how good your estimator is, you're, you're always going to be short money. You may want to uh, suggest that some of this CMAC money be put in a contingency fund to cover any unforeseen construction costs or other problems associated with that project at Highway 12 and 26. It, because you never seem to have enough money, it seems like, on any given project. You're always running short. The other suggestion is you might want to think about um, the county suggested, in fact, it, it was in uh, it was in Melissa's conference room, the county suggested about a year and a half ago or two years ago about a bike path alongside of Highway 26 between the left turn pockets that, are, that Caltrans is going to build at St. Andrews and Vista del Lago, build a bike path from uh, St. Andrews toward town and widen that shoulder out so you get a shoulder widening plus you get bike and pedestrian path and where people can walk especially now with a law that says you have to give a bicyclist three feet of clearance well you can't do that on that stretch of highway 26 without going into the other lane so you might want to think about there's a possibility that excuse me there that should require much of it of ps and e work and environmental work the other suggestion I, I would make is that there's a gap between the two left turn pocket projects about a half a mile maybe not quite I think it was around 1500 feet but it was suggested we're about highway 26 and yes Springs. between the two left turn pockets you're going to have the left turn pocket of St. Andrews then you're going to have the road where it narrows down and winds and goes over right. Hill and Dale and then over to Vista Lock where it's going to widen out again and so that gap was a possibility to be widened, not widened to three lanes or a two-way left turn lane or anything, just the shoulder work. Just a two-way uh, state highway. And the money that's built in the two lane the two pockets is safety money. Caltrans determined that safety money that that project, that gap widening and straightening out, does not qualify for safety money. But you could use this money for that if you chose to do so and that would fill that gap widen that gap between the, the two left turn pockets but again that's up to you how you spend the money I'm just glad it's being spent or hopefully going to be spent thank you okay. right. Mr. Hanham Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dave Hannum, Director of Planning and Building for the City of Angels. That's what that money is being used for in the city, is filling gap projects. We have gap projects along State Highway 49, where we have high schools and elementary school kids that are walking along, walking along shoulders uh, along State Route 49. So, uh, so speaking of what Mr. Caldwell is talking about, that's exactly what we're doing. We're filling in our gaps where our students and, and in our business district, where we have a lot of pedestrian uh, we have a lot of pedestrian traffic. We're also, as a part of this, as a part of this, and that's what some of these projects that we're looking at to do is being able to connect our neighborhoods to our downtown. Right now, we have we have Stealthy Park subdivision on the on the east side. We've got we've got uh, Greenhorn Creek on the west, and to get to, for a pedestrian to get to downtown or to even our our central business area is pretty difficult. So. By, by mashing all these projects together and by the flexibility that we have to use, I think this money is going to be well spent in terms of design. And, and, and believe me, after doing the last federal project money with sidewalk and design, we're going to need all that money. And, that's, uh, <laughs> uh, and we just did like 2,600 feet of sidewalk, and that cost us almost $750,000 to construct, to do the environmental, to do the whole thing. And so we're looking at some wide gaps and, and to be able to stretch our design dollars. Uh, and this project is to uh, to expand some of our designs from what we originally approved, we originally had when we had the the first set of projects come through, we were looking to design, you know, PS and E and construction. Well, now we've got the ability to design for additional length, so that when there are pots of money available, that we can then go ahead and then apply. So it's actually going to be very beneficial and connect. And we're looking at right now connecting huge parts of of our of our city um, from uh, on the west side of. Uh, highway 49 south of highway 4 all the way to Stockton Road that's a huge that's a huge gap that we will be able to design potentially be able to design for 
So I think I think this money is going to be going to good use, and I think the money uh, is and it's following our sidewalk inventory that the city put together probably about 10 years ago uh, to fill gap projects to, to do that. So I want to thank Melissa and her staff and the county and their staff for uh, uh, for working with us on this and uh, look forward to this project moving forward. And it will be going to our council next Tuesday. So okay. and if you have any questions on any of the projects, I'd be happy to answer. Just, just one comment, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. by getting the environmental and uh, design for the bike path out of the way, doesn't that now make the city more competitive for that flap money? That oh, we, yeah, definitely. We've applied for two years for that and have been turned down in both cases because the project is just too big? Well, that and, and because it really wasn't construction ready and the, and, and the environmental on that, on at least the, the some of the pedestrian part, is going to be pretty lengthy and uh, by, by clearing all of that now, it should put us in better competition for all the, all the different ATP cycles, the flap, the, you know, future allocations in, in future years. So it just gives us a, a good and by designing the first two phases and environmentally clearing the whole Angels Creek uh, Trail program, uh, it, the first part is all basically in the urban area of Angels. So it basically from Salty Park all the way down to Finnegan Lane. So that's, that's still all within, I mean, we're not even touching anything on, on the south side of uh, Angels Creek. And it's all urban area to, to, to and, and connect our neighborhoods to, to downtown. So. Great. So, yeah. So just to clarify, the recreational component of that total plan is not CMAC eligible. No. But what will help you be eligible for those recreational trails grants is this local contribution uh, towards the whole plan. Right. The city's going to be able to demonstrate that they have support, that they've begun implementing, and right. uh, be able to utilize this in their federal lands, their flop grants right. as they move forward. Also, I think it's going to help them with the active transportation program. Um, there are safe routes to school components of the ATP. There's also a recreational component of the ATP. Mm -hmm. So I think that this positions you better to move yeah. forward with more competitive programs. And, and I would encourage, um, you know, the 1226 um, issues on 26. We've talked a lot. The council probably remembers the discussions about the gauntlet is what the community referred to. Um, the gap between the intersection um, and I think Vista Del Lago and St. Andrews. And so uh, there is that opportunity to coordinate, but I think if that's the interest, I think the city set a pretty good example about um, the the uh, active transportation, bike and ped circulation and planning. And so then it makes opportunities like this easy to get behind funding those when you have a comprehensive existing plan that shows the circulation network. Um, one of the things that we're often challenged with when we meet with Caltrans is they want to see where does this improvement tie into the bigger circulation issue. And so I think the city's made the right decisions in planning and it's provided this opportunity. Thank you. Any further comments on the minute order, uh, agenda item number 12 here to uh, revise the programming necessary to obligate the fiscal year 14-15 congestion CMAC funds? Is there a motion to approve the minute order? Um, Moved by Councilmember Morris. Second. Second by Councilmember Ponte. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approved 6 0. A presentation on the CCOG web-based capital improvement program and submittal of the quarterly reports for council review uh, presented by Melissa Raggio. I moved on you. <laughs> you huh? did. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, before I get started, um, does any of the council have any questions on the quarterly report submitted? I can answer any of that. Melissa, well, so I had a question on the, this. You're referencing the attachment one uh, spreadsheet? Yes. When was this run? What's that? When was the date of this run? It just, um, it's a summary table, but I didn't know, you know if this was like the March end of... March 25th. March, okay, so it's recent. Yeah. Are the items that have a lot of zero percents are some of them we're waiting on input from respective agencies to get them updated, or are they is yes, this fairly up to date? 
Well, on the uh, transit capital projects, those were just approved in the PTMISCA um, programming worksheet. So now uh, transit staff is submitting the allocation requests. So I've put that they're approved projects by the COG, so now they're in the CIP. And now the next step would be Deborah would submit the allocation request. And once we start those and receive the money from the bond sales, then she'll start reporting um, activity. Okay. Did you have any specific project that had a? Not at this time. Okay. Is there any other questions by the council? Okay. okay, I just wanted to do um, a little refresher on the CIP. I think uh, most of you have seen a presentation here at the council before. Um, Mr. Kearney, um, this may be your first time seeing it, but um, the COG uh, ap approved funding allocations and approved projects are identified in the CIP. Um, the goal of the CIP is to provide a portal to the public on key project um, information, maps, um, funding, so let me, um, COG staff, city staff, county staff, um, electeds, we all have varying levels of access to view project information. Um, right here on the Arnold Rim project. I'll use it as an example. Um, on the upper part of the screen or um, graph, you have the basic project description, the map, if there was any images that you wanted to show. Um, as we move further down, this is approved funding. This is where COG staff would enter all the programs um, and approve funding. Uh, important dates on these areas right here with the um, the little clock we have the uh, ability to put in the project managers email um, so that they would receive notification or updates on important dates we also uh, have the ability to enter the schedule and then down here is where we, um, COG staff, city staff, county staff, we report on the invoices to date and how they're paying down through the phases. Um, the CIP provides um, COG the, the tool um, to track funding allocations, critical deadlines, um, and work completed to date. Um, it's also a way for us to communicate with the other agencies. Down here we have a document library which would have all the important documents pertaining to this project, um, <coughs> contracts, um, E76, finance letters, and then you can also um, update notes. So you're communicating with the city, county, um, on the projects and status. Does anyone have any questions? Melissa, did you have anything? I should. Um, so reports. this is the uh, program that the Council of Governments has been working on building over the last four years, I believe. So yes. uh, we've just recently added now the email notifications, which is great, but I think it's a really good tool. Many of you know the reason that we created this was that COG was no longer going to be the pass-through for city and county projects. They wouldn't be in the overall work program, but we needed a way to still monitor those projects. So this was our solution. We think that it provides a great public interface in that uh, the public has access to this information. They can log on to our website. It's a good way for project managers to communicate with the public in terms of all of the required project information, uh, maps where a project in their neighborhood might be going, and <coughs> any pictures or photos about the project or project details. I think it's also great in terms of tracking funding. So when we make these programming changes, we need to track where the funds are, how they're programmed, and critical deadlines. We don't want those reversion dates. So this is an opportunity uh, where we won't worry about losing track of those or able to program those deadlines, and then it sends notifications. It's also how we generate your reports so that you can see um, how projects are moving forward. Uh, the information that we ask for, for example, invoice to date, uh, public works or the city will populate that information. 
Um, and then we also share the document library or notes to communicate. So I think it's a great way to provide a seamless interface in terms of communication between staff. Um, and we're still working, we're still living with it, we're still troubleshooting. There's a lot of projects that are still in transition, whereby oftentimes we go, who's inputting that information? Is yeah. it COG staff or is it public work staff? Is it my project? Is it your project? That still happens, but someday um, everything will be set and in place. Uh, and we have notified uh, city and county staff that we will not approve future claims because one of the things we don't ask much when we ask that the information be updated, um, but we do need to keep track of how the COG approved funds are being spent and when they're being spent or if they're at risk of not being spent. And so we have said that in order to approve future claims, city and county staff are going to have to update their existing projects. So if a project's complete, let's say it's complete so that the COG knows how your money's been spent um, before we approve the next allocation. Um, so I think that that's all I would have to add, unless you have any questions. Melissa is always available to work with um, council members or city and county staff on how it works. Um, we have a user's guide that we've been created that has step-by-step -step instructions that we're always happy to share. And so, we also have the, the availability to now archive projects so the reports aren't overloaded with projects that were complete. We had had those on our previous <coughs> quarterly reports. So we are able to identify active projects and archive projects. Um, we're working on refining some reports. I've met with Council Member Heminger. And um, so hopefully we'll come up with some new reports that would be helpful to the Council in our quarterly reporting. Does anyone have any questions? As I understand it, this is not a tool, I think you said you had to log on to the site, but really I don't think there's any requirement for credentials. You can just go to the, the Calaveras COG yep. website and find and the link. And there's a link, yes. And just go right from the link and you, yes. it's available right um, there. Basic public access would not allow you to um, click on the document library. That is for internal staff. Um, electeds can view, but they can't make any changes. Right. So it's varying levels uh, depending on the project manager, staff, and the agency. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Uh-huh. Thank you. Any, other? any further comment? Mr. Caldwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gary Caldwell, Valley Springs. First of all, I'm really pleased to see that the council is monitoring the projects and delivery of those projects and claiming of money. And I'm glad to also read here that the Executive Director will not be recommending for approval uh, unless uh, the project is up to snuff and hopefully there's satisfactory progress on the project. In fact, you know, I, if I were... Uh, well, I want to be I, careful how you say that. My understanding <laughs> was that the data input to the CIP listings needed to be up to date before future claims were put on? Correct. It's not a tool that we're saying we're going to be monitoring the progress of the projects themselves. That's up to the member agencies and or the COG if we have responsibility for well, the Well, you, you're monitoring it by just reading this chart. Correct. And in my re well, not this chart, but this chart. In my Correct. reading it, I, I look for, a couple things I looked for was the program year, and if you just go down where it says fiscal year, you'll see some years there, fiscal years of 07, 08. Hard to believe, but there's still projects out there that have not, where all the money has not yet been claimed and they were programmed in 2007-8. And also I go over to the right-hand column where it says percent invoice to date. Now, I'm almost certain that the Arnold Rim Trail project is complete, 100% complete. But only 43% of the money has been invoiced. That means the county has left over $200,000 sitting there. And uh, in my mind, unless you've got a lot of money, you don't leave that kind of money just sitting there. They should be claiming that money, invoicing for it. And if you go down, uh, as you pointed out, uh, Council Member Gomes, you pointed out a couple of zero percents in there, and I look for those too. And uh, the bus stop improvement phase three project that was just talked about earlier tonight, with the transit uh, uh, shelters and so forth. Um, that, and that's one of those projects that was programmed, part of it was in 0708. 
Only 35% of the money has been claimed. 31% um, for the Safe Routes to School. And most of it that hasn't been claimed in that is federal money. That should be claimed. Put it in the bank, let the county put it in the bank. And um, you'll see some others uh, down there, like the Mountain Ranch Turnout and Safety Improvements, also a county project. Only 38% of the money has been claimed. That, that's leaving uh, approximately uh, $700,000 on the table. These, these should be uh, current. They should not be allowing, the county should not be leaving that kind of money sitting there in the bank in Washington, D.C. or wherever it is. Mr. Chair, may I comment? Go ahead, Melissa. Yes. Thank you. In regards to the Arnold Rim project, the, count, uh, the county has gone to the Board of Supervisors and they have approved a uh, notice of completion. We're in the process of preparing the final um, construction package and the final invoicing. So I expect that any time. The project can be complete, but you need time to prepare all the final exhibits, all the final invoicing, and then submit it to the COG, and then I, we would update the CIP. So at that time, I, we would update it. Okay. But my point is still valid. Don't leave money sitting on the table. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment regarding the... I have number 13 uh, capital improvement program presentation. I have a question just in general. So when a project is completed, what's kind of the time frame to close out the financial end of it? Well, is once, there a well, once the county um, receives an, an approval on a notice of completion, you have six months to then file your final package with Caltrans. So as long as you don't let your notice of completion expire, mm -hmm. you're you should be good. Okay. Um, it usually takes, you know, um, in 30, 60, 90. If you're receiving all of your contractors' invoices, you got to make sure that those pay are paid because it's a reimbursable funding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they need to pay the invoices, submit their claim to COG with the whole construction package, notice of completion, and once that's done, then we would update the CIP. Okay. Any other? Any further discussion? Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Item number 14, consideration of a change of the monthly meeting time for the Calaveras Council of Governments. Uh, Melissa Eats. Very good. Staff does recommend the council consider a request to change the monthly meeting time and provide direction to staff to init initiate the work with the city and county to amend the joint powers agreement to reflect any modification should it be necessary. At the regular meeting of March 4th, a request was made to modify the COG meeting uh, time and staff was directed to bring back an item for council consideration. Uh, we have attached uh, the joint powers agreement, the specific section that refers to our meeting location and time. Uh, we have reviewed with legal counsel and has determined that a JPA amendment would be necessary and provided some flexible uh, language that would accommodate any future changes that the council might have in terms of meeting time or location. Um, I have attached for you uh, the JPA amendment um, and the changes that were made on November 2013. So though you see those changes in attachment number one, those were the November 13 uh, JPA changes that were approved by uh, the governing boards. So with that, I would like to turn it over to you for council uh, discussion. And I did also hear from Council member Amanda Fallendorf on this item, and I'm happy to uh, make the council aware of her comments and concerns at an appropriate time. Okay. Uh, this is. Do we have comments from the council? I'll, I'll council make comments. Th th this was a suggestion that I had made. Um, to be brought back forth. Um, I was encouraging an earlier start time, not necessarily changing the day of the week or the month, but an earlier start time. Um, one of the things I note in meetings that I attend, especially with COG, is that many times um, for the public to attend, and especially with the COG, uh, one of the reasons our transit system stops at the five, six o'clock hour 
and uh, we're trying to encourage members to attend and utilize transit, um, having an earlier meeting time might encourage them to do so. In addition to that, when I looked at the last two years of attending COG meetings, I found that um, majority of the time we did not have members of the public here. Excuse me, not majority of the times. There were times where we didn't have members of the public here and we were looking at staff time. And I know that staff time, oftentimes uh, the potential to incur the overtime and such of staff at these night meetings and looking at moving it to an earlier time of day to help avoid some of that overtime. In addition to that, sitting in this room, there are certain times where I know we try very hard to monitor the error uh, of this room and usually in this particular room uh, for the county, you know, the clock stops at the five o'clock hour and, and uh, the heating and air doesn't often follow um, <coughs> a good, a comfortable level, I should say, for some of our night meetings when the air is going off. And I know that staff tries to adjust our heating and air system at the county, and that's often difficult to, to, uh, to monitor. So we either suffer in heat, or usually it's heat um, that I find in this particular room. So I was just suggesting that perhaps an earlier start time, um, the three, four o'clock hour perhaps, um, and uh, taking a look at our COG meetings starting at that uh, particular time. And I do find that the COGs in our general area are meeting most times during the daytime hours versus the nighttime hours um, when I looked at other COGs in our, in our region, primarily Amador and Tuolumne County. So those were just some thoughts and, and a suggestion to consider that time change and you know, open it up to any other kind of comments that folks may have. Thank you. Councilmember Hemminger. Yeah, I um, like the language that's being proposed here. It seems to give the COG the flexibility to implement at some future time whatever changes we want. I think we want to clarify the, the, the red highlighted items on the attachment. No, I'm speaking of the, um, the, re the report. The, on the cover memo, uh, indented paragraph that's in Okay. Okay. And I guess we're, yeah, it was a little confusing to me, but I guess the attachment was previously amended, but this goes a little bit further, essentially, okay. to give, give the council a little more unencumbered freedom to make the changes without going through a lot of unnecessary approvals and red tape. So I support the simple language, and I guess with that, the JPA will have to be modified by both the city and the county. Okay. Come ahead. Councilman Rickle. Well, I don't know if, if it's possible to select the, an optimum time that you're going to give the best access to the public and a time where you're going to perhaps uh, avoid some salary expenses, at, at least from the city's point of view, any staff, the staff members that usually attend this meeting, they're all salaried people. They get paid uh, one check or two checks a month, no matter how many hours they put in. So there wouldn't be any salary savings to the city. And, and my guess is that it's probably a similar experience with the county, although I'm not sure. Uh, in terms of making the meetings more accessible to the public, yes, I agree with Councilmember Ponte, earlier in the day would make uh, public transportation more viable for members of the public, but then you also have members of the public that work eight to five, and you're going to uh, make it fairly difficult for those people to participate. So I don't know that there is a right answer that, that fits every situation. Um, I'm aware of, uh, of alternate member Fallendorf's concern because she is, she is a working uh, elected official. She has difficulty uh, with day meetings. And when I set up the committee appointments at the city council, I was <coughs> trying to take particular care to, uh, to put her on committees that would meet in the late afternoon, evening hours. To, I know she in, has an interest in regional uh, 
uh, government and regional issues, and the COG is, is an ideal place for her to be involved. And my suspicion is in her future years as a council person, she will be more involved with COG. So I'm of the opinion to just leave things as they are. Maybe I kind of agree Morris. with the, what uh, Wes has said, but also I think leaving it at a, at a later hour when there is a project that is somewhat controversial or a large project, you would get more people would be able to come at the later meeting time than early in the afternoon due to the fact that a lot of younger people do work eight to five. So. I would <coughs> like to leave it as is for the time being. But then also this has to go to the City Council and the Board of Supervisors if we decide tonight that we want to change that, correct? Yeah. I've had a bit of, of a different experience, even though this is only my second COG. <coughs> I also served on the County Planning Commission for four years. And when I was on that commission, uh, the planning commission humored me and tried night meetings, uh, which I suggested, and they were very good about it. And the attendance went to almost nothing uh, in, the, in the evening. The morning meetings were very well attended. Uh, uh, and as soon as we dropped them, that attendance came back. Uh, I don't have the perfect answer for you either. I, I know, uh, to me, the perfect thing would be to work when not doing something like this in the evenings, but for some reason, I believe this county responds better to meetings that are earlier during the day. Okay. At least that has been my experience. Any, Mr. Hamager? And again, maybe clarify this for me. It's my understanding what is before us isn't changing the meeting date to any particular time or date, but what is before us is a modification to the JPA to enable the council to make any changes if they so desire in the future. That's correct. Right. So it doesn't require a change, and it still would be up to the, if we had <coughs> adopted or passed this item, it still would be up to the council to decide to change or not to change, this would just give us the flexibility to do so. Okay. That is, I think, a, a possibility. Um, I think from my perspective, um, I would like the council to discuss and consider. Um, if that's the case, then perhaps I might not recommend a change to the joint powers agreement. Um, and going before the city and, and county if there is no interest in changing the meeting time and location uh, but I, that is your discretion is to make the either decide that there's going to be uh, the consideration of a time change and what that might be and then we can follow through with the JPA amendment or you could also you know follow through with the JPA amendment come back to the item and consider it at a later time once that flexibility is provided I go through all the motions to accommodate a change if we're not going to make a change just so far, Jim, maybe I can get clarification on this. The current language allows us to make a change, but it has to be done um, at the prior meeting so that the upcoming meeting is noticed at the prior meeting. I guess what I'm saying is if we were to decide to make a change, the current JPA says that generally we will meet at 630. So if we decide on an ongoing basis to change it to 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock, we to follow the current JPA, we'd be basically noticing at the end of the current meetings that the next meeting would be at four or five o'clock every following meeting. I think to me the, per the important language is that it's so as if it becomes necessary to change the meeting. It implies that there's some good cause where you have to change the meeting. And then you could do that and you just have to comply with the Brown Act requirements for right. notice. So that gives you some flexibility. But I didn't think that was would actually allow uh, just a, a total a general change, change. Of, the, of the time of the meeting. Okay. Or you could argue, you could make that argument, but I don't think it's it's the, the right way to read this. Okay. The original JPA was very restrictive. It said that it, uh, overly so, I think. It said that you had to meet in this room at, at six thirty. Um, we found that once this room wasn't available, so what do you do? That's that's what led to mm -hmm. this change, which gave us a little flexibility if it became necessary. 
Okay. Um, the question now is whether the, the, we should be bound by, by the JPA or just you have the discretion to decide when you need. I think Mr. Hunter's right. It just, it just makes it possible for this board to make the decisions as to when and where and at what time you need. Okay. So the, the action item that we're asked to, to look at is to change the current red-lettered language that's in the existing JPA to propose to our, our member boards to accept a more generic, more flexible language. At this time, we're not proposing a change. We're just asking that we have the ability to make that change uh, as a board ourselves without having to go to the other boards on an ongoing basis or continue to notice it at our meetings on an ongoing basis. If you go through that process, you get approval from the, get the JPA amended, then I think you come back and have the discussion Correct. you're having tonight right. about Williams. About where, and where, 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 where and when, right, okay. So to have the opportunity to have more flexible um, council, COG council directed um, meeting times, do we have a motion to amend the JPA, to make a recommendation to amend the JPA project uh, agreement to the uh, respective county and, and city boards. Uh, I'll make that motion and I just want to say that with this current language, not only does it allow us to look at dates and times, but also the location. We may find to where right. on occasion we want to have a meeting within the City of Angels. And this particular language allows us as a council to determine which is the better time, place, and date to meet. And um, I think from, from our board, um, the county board, they, they, would, they would support that kind of, of language in a JPA. Um, because again, we might, we might want to hold a meeting in Angels Camp or Valley Springs or another location of the county. So. Um, I make a motion to support this language that would change the JPA to say that the COG will generally meet monthly on the dates and at the time and location to be determined by the council in accordance with the provisions of the Brown Act. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. Do we have further discussion? Just, mm -hmm. just clarification. So everything that's in red, even the strikeouts and the underlined, everything under meeting ag agendas, A, subcategory one, all of that would be deleted and we would substitute this simple two set, I mean two line sentence in its place, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, that is the, that is the motion before us. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 6 0. You have direction. Okay. okay. I don't know, Chair, I, I, I forgot. We didn't ask for any public comment, and I don't know if we have any public comment on this item. Um, I apologize, but we've already approved the, the item at this point. I would say at the next meeting, there'll be additional opportunities for the public to address the actual time issue itself. At this point, we're just asking that the JPA be amended. Right. Okay. I just... You, you, you can remedy it by asking for the government and revoting it if there isn't. All right. Um, thank you, Council. <laughs> Is there any public comment uh, regarding the uh, opportunity for the COD Council to uh, modify uh, the language to allow us to meet monthly on the dates and time location to be determined by the council. Mr. Hanham. I just have a clarification, Mr. because I don't remember seeing this at the technical advisory committee. So if it was, maybe it was a meeting that I didn't, I wasn't at or, or that. So I didn't know if that was a, you know, a discussion to have at that meeting before we brought it to the board or since it's a, you know, potential JPA amendment. Uh, so I don't know if that's just as part of the procedure or. It didn't go to the technical advisory committee. It was direction directly from the COG board to staff to bring it to this item, to this board. And it's not related to transportation, land use. It's related to the administration 
um, of the organization. So from my perspective, not the purview of the Technical Advisory Committee. Mr. Colville. Mr. Chair, I wanted to thank Councilmember Ponzi for giving consideration to your public comment on the item, at least. That's good that the public is considered. Thank you. Okay. I do not sense or see any need, though, to re vote on the matter, so I'm going to move to action item, to item number 15. Consideration and direction to staff to evaluate the lease options for an alternative site location for our main office. Melissa Raggio. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff is seeking direction to evaluate um, office lease options and begin discussions on terms for a building located at 1311 South Main Street, Angels Camp. COG staff would like to request an extension from the current landlord on the 90-day notice requirement to allow COG to consider the alternative site at the May 6, 2015 regular meeting. So at this time, staff is just asking for direction to apply or notice our current landlord and request an extension in order to gain more information and bring back to the council options um, on the Angels campsite. If anyone had any questions? What's the current status? Is that the lease due to expire or we need to? Yes, the lease will expire July 31st of this year. And we need to give him notice 90 days prior. You're giving him notice that you're gonna vacate or that you want an extension of that? Well, first I'm asking for direction to request an extension so that we could look at other options. Well, I would encourage you to request an extension. I. I have to admit I was real disappointed to, to uh, read that the office would go to Angel's Camp. I would like it to stay uh, as close to the government center as possible. Um, there, there are, have we looked at all options in San Andreas? <coughs> Pardon me that there are. I, I did look at everything that you have listed. Okay. Um, but I didn't see anybody checking the CCWD building that's empty. Um, I know we did it's, call on that building also. Um, well, they, I called them today and they didn't remember that, so I guess when I called it was not the right person. Okay. Um, but it, it is a large building. I know that there are upgrades that need to be done um, or anything else locally that we can keep it in San Andreas. For one thing, I don't, I, I don't want to disconnect from the lower part of the county, and it seems like when things move to uh, out of San Andreas, where I'm at, we get a... Uh, a feeling that you know we've lost a little bit of that and at least when it's close to the government center we have a connect with it uh, and it's I don't have anything against Angels Camp I love the city but, but <coughs> the other thing is I don't want to see another empty building in San Andreas I'm trying to find things to go into them um, and if, if we're gonna leave one I would sure like it if we would consider every single possibility in the town of San Andreas okay. bar none okay. I had a question. Sure. It's my understanding that the primary motive for seeking alternate space is uh, the, the lease is due to expire. Yep. So there's a decision point there, but it's also space. Space it's and storage. We currently rent a storage unit here in San Andreas. Um, if we were able to look at this new site, we would be able to have our storage. We'd have a little bit more room and we would have uh, more room and I think comparable money. Um, the current location we're at, we are right next door to the resource connection. Um, so I don't know um, if the site would go vacant. Um, well, that, that was going to be my question. Do you do you know what the terms of their lease are? Is theirs due to I don't know re expire, what renew, or do they plan on moving? Could you expand into their area? Um, they could expand into ours. I don't know if their lease is up for uh, to expire but another issue we have is currently they rent a majority of the building our technical um, or our technology uh, modem is in the downstairs portion that they rent and because of their um, 
federal and state regulations, it has to stay locked. There's confidential information in there. So if anything goes wrong with our modem or our technology um, machinery, we aren't able to get in without them giving us a key to get in to have someone, you know, fix our equipment. And that has happened several times because yeah. we don't control or have access. Uh, their tech crews will come down and <coughs> next thing you know, we don't have service and then we can't get their tech crews back to figure out what happened. Now we're paying our tech crews and we're waiting till someone can come back in and, and fix the um, problem for us. So that does complicate uh, the issues with our existing facility and our existing base. But what I think um, we're looking for is an evaluation of alternatives. I think generally we're happy with the location that we have. We're happy with the space that we have. But we want to be able to uh, bring to the council consideration of alternatives. We want to look for either a comparable space or an improve, improved space. And we want to look for something that is going to be a win-win, which means not only has to afford us and provide us um, the accommodations, but also be reasonably priced and sort of a better deal than what we're working with. So I think that we have um, a fit within the San Andreas area, though it's limited in terms of the technology, it's limited in terms of storage space. You know, we're at the point of reaching capacity. Um, we're looking at alternatives and wanting to just weigh those and vet those and see if there's a better site location. This hasn't been easy. Um, we've been looking for about a, a year now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and most uh, inquiries have been uh, dead ends for us because we're not looking uh, to make any more of a financial investment than what the council's already making. So we're not looking to make improvements, whether that be air conditioning or substantial ADA improvements or renovations within a building. Uh, we're looking for something that we currently have or better for a lower price. And if that's out there, then we want to be able to look into it. So, Can I just clarify the, the deadline, what's the deadline that the state here, um, you currently have a five-year lease that expires on July 1st. July 31st. 31st, 31st sorry. Uh, and the, that lease gives you the option, the contractual right, to extend the, the, the lease. And the price is even set, so you have the right to extend the lease, uh, but we have to give 90 days notice to get exercise that option. So that's the 90 days that needs to be extended. Uh, Question is, is the extension period long term or can you, can you give the 90 day notice and, and ask for a short term month to month extension just to, to buy more time to find additional sites? Um, we can inquire into that. Our current lease, I thought the understanding was if we renewed, it would be for another five years. I think that's true. Yeah, and then it, he So the he minimum evaluates, commitment is another five years. Yes, and then he evaluates um, the urban, you know, consumer index and increases the rent based on that. So we were trying to look for a fixed rate for a five-year period instead of a annual increase. We've encountered, rate. I think, a 5% increase each year. Yes. Uh, with our existing lease. And so we're looking for alternatives that are competitive, yeah. to say the least, with our existing lease. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's a good idea to have, you know, pay $500 a month in additional storage, storage. costs. Uh, although there may be some value for having some records off-site for fire purposes, I mean that that seems just inefficient, and and I agree with Councilman Kearney. As much as we'd like to have you in Angels Camps, I think San Andreas is the is the county government center, the county seat, and I think it's a natural extension for this regional body to be here as well. Uh, and I don't know what uh, the vacancy. <laughs> factor here is if there really is alternate sites, but, but I would try to get a short-term extension just to look uh, at additional alternatives. Yeah, I'm a little confused if what's before us, it says to extend extension of the 90-day notice requirement. Are we trying to reduce the 90-day notice requirement so we don't have to increase give them 90 days? Or are we trying to extend at least 90 days 
beyond July 31st. Yes, give us more time to evaluate and bring back to the council because we only meet once a month. So we would have to notify them three months prior. So we're asking for a three month extension? Well, I haven't identified an exact period. I'm just asking if the council would be interested in me looking at alternative sites in Angels and San Andreas and bring them back. And in that case, then I would request an extension of the 90 days from the current landlord, bring back more um, options, have them discussed and see where we would want to move forward. So extend the lease 90 days beyond July 31st if this board wants you to exactly. look at other places. Exactly. Any further discussion by the council? No, I'd be in favor of encouraging you to extend the lease okay. and really do some out-of-the-box thinking. Um, Cal Fire, I hear, is packing up and there may be some options there, or CCWD, there may be some options there. Um, I know these are, are not, uh, maybe not the first choices, but uh, I would really love to see it stay in San Andreas. And we can bring back those options and also identify, you know, if there's ADA that improvements or what would be the cost to the council if they would like us to okay. stay in the area. I'm just going to pull the board because discussion and direction is being asked here. Uh, I think we're all in agreement at this point that it would be a good idea to ask Melissa to go ahead and request an extension from our current landlord for an additional 90 days so that we would have until basically July to either give notice or renew the lease. Yes. And that's what I'm hearing from the board. Yes. Yep. <coughs> and yes. I give you direction. Okay. Thank you. Is there any comment by the public that we'd like to be made? Okay. County report. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome our new public works director, Jeff Krowitz. Thank you, Cog. I'm well into my second week. Um, I'm here to report on a couple of Cog projects uh, status, so you guys are aware of where we're at. The first one I'd like to uh, discuss is the 1226 intersection <coughs> improvements. Uh, the underground storage tanks, including the Phantom tank that was lately discovered, are all removed. Uh, on the 6th of April, PG&E will begin the relocation of their utilities to clear the um, right of way for construction. Uh, the county currently has a construction advertisement open for this project and bids will be opening on the 24th of April and we expect to bring the award to the Board of Supervisors on the 26th of May. That should send us into construction this summer. Excellent. Any questions? Great. On the wagon trail. Um, I got to see that one for the first time in person this afternoon with our program manager and some of my staff. Um, current status is the draft environmental document and draft project report are um, nearing completion, ready for circulation. We're expecting them to be ready to circulate in approximately three weeks. Um, we're expecting a public hearing workshop combined uh, to occur late May, which is in the middle of the circulation period, and that would be at Bret Hart High School in Angels Camp. We think that's an appropriate location given the location of the project. Um, we're hoping for completion of the environmental document project report um, and a notice of determination in the uh, November timeframe of this year. Um, the county will begin preparing an RFP for the next phase, which is ps &E, the design portion, um, right away portion. St we'll start our work in July with, a, with an expected contract award um, sometime in the October, November timeframe so that we are ready to go to work as soon as we um, complete our environmental docu document project report process. Um, of interest, we currently have a FLAP grant application out um, seeking additional funding um, that would help to move the project a little closer to whole. Um, we're expecting results of this application late April. Um, that will help us to determine our ps &E scope and the amount of work that we can uh, expect to complete in this particular phase of the project. Uh, any questions on our uh, wagon trail? 
Any questions for Public Works? Well, thank you very much. I look forward to working with you. I've enjoyed working with your staff and uh, City of Angels. Thank you. Thank you. The transit report. Well, I'm going to skip over the bus stop improvement project and the and the bus stop lighting project um, and move on to the um, the PTM ISCA uh, projects that were in the quarterly report as having zero percentages. Um, we submitted the allocation request for those nine projects yesterday, um, March 31st, in time for the March 31st deadline for those. And I hope to hear for those from uh, PTMISA about the um, where those are going and be ready to buy some buses on that list. We have uh, the rest of the fleet replacement and. Uh, the, the match for the inner city bus, the bus to, for the Stockton service, as well as um, the AVL system and the new radio system for the buses and equipment and maintenance, um, equipment for the bus stop shelter washing and the maintenance. Um, so those items have, uh, the cost of those items have changed a little bit since you approved the, um, the program expenditure plan. So we're going to be bringing back the, uh, the sub-recipient agreement between the, the county and the COG. Um, those, those projects are the exhibit to that agreement. So we're going to bring that back to the um, Board of Supervisors on the 28th, April 28th, and the COG, uh, your board, on May 6th. Um, the, the FTA 5311 operating assistance um, grant will be, application will be due soon. The, we're bringing the um, authorization for the public works director to apply for those, those funds. Those, that's the routine annual um, operating assistance. Your um, approval of that, um, that you passed last year was good for three years. Ours would have been good for three years, but we had the amount of last year's. So uh, Caltrans asked that we bring that back to the board. So that application is due um, May 8th. Another um, grant program that we're, that's in its first year is the Low Carbon Transit Operations Program, or LOOKTOP. And um, the, the letter with the, the allocation for the, the county is in the, your, um, in your board packet. Um, under correspondence, but Calaveras will get uh, 14549 So that application is due real quick, uh, April 15th. And what we're going to do with that 14000 is a, um, a fair, a transit fair voucher program. And we're going to use it to entice people to try out transit and, and try to um, to make that available for people who are, have transportation challenges. We're going to work with the resource connection and um, through their, their mobile pantries because they have outreach to people that are in the areas where maybe they don't know about uh, Calvary's Transit or aren't able to, uh, you know, have some reticence against trying it out. So free fare will, will help overcome that. Um, so. And that will be an annual uh, grant program. We might come up with a different project for next year. And I think this year's the first uh, year's program. They said you have to use the funds all at once, use it all this year. Um, but we might come up with a next year with a project that we can roll the funds up and uh, let it accumulate and do something bigger and do something um, that comes clear to us. And it all has to be projects that um, will help lower greenhouse emissions, greenhouse gases. Um, we're going to uh, extend service to Burson um, from the, as we know from the last year's unmet needs, we've uh, finally tweaked out the, the schedule and it's been sent to the designer and hopefully once we know when this will be printed that we will um, 
publicize the change in schedule. It changes a little bit of the other stops. Um, what, the, what we plan on doing is having three uh, routes a day that from the last stop in Daphne and Valley Springs, if someone can have a demand response to, to Burson, if they ask to go to Burson, or if they let us know uh, two hours in advance that they're going to be in Burson and they need to be picked up. So we're going to work with the, the people that usually use the bus, or we think will use, usually use the bus from Burson, and um, see how we can work together and get that, uh, get that going. Um, other little updates to that uh, schedule include leaving uh, Columbus Day out as a holiday. We will next year provide service on uh, Columbus Day, and we're going to list all the special events so that hopefully people will know that transit service is available for um, things like the Gold Rush Days and the other community events. Um, this year's fair, um, we're going to be providing shuttle service. We're working on the schedule for that, and um, I'll send that out to you. And it'll be on the, the uh, Calvers Transit website, maybe the COG website too. And uh, you can all help talk that up and uh, get people to ride the bus because it'll um, it's good for us, it's good for everybody, and it, um, people that take transit to the, the fair don't have to pay the parking fee and they get let off right by the gate there. So there'll be um, service from Valley Springs, um, Valley Springs Express, and we'll get to more details about that. Um, and then um, I'm going to hand over the transit report to Cynthia Lawrence from uh, Paratransit Services. She's going to tell you about the, um, the Amador Calaveras Joint Disaster Exercise that's going to take place later this month. And she's been very involved in getting uh, the plan so that Calaveras Transit is available to help in, in the event of a, a disaster. That So before I hand it over to you, is there anything um, anybody would like to? Me to talk on further about? No. Okay, well, Cynthia you. Lawrence. Thank you. Hi there, Cynthia Lawrence, Paratransit Services, and the um, Operations Transit Manager for Calvers Transit. Is there if I hand you these? So, um, as you know, the uh, rainfall has not been uh, very fruitful here, and of course there's a growing concern for um, a mass fire, a large-scale fire in Calaveras County. Um, and I have had the pleasure of being on the planning committee, and um, we've identified some things for transit. And um, so just to give you an overview, it's a joint county. It's Calaveras and Amador County. Um, it's going to be a large wildfire, a large-scale wildfire um, simulation on April 16th. Um, and it's going to be up in West Point, and I gave you a, a map that will show the area. Uh, the proposed uh, of this joint exercise is to test and evaluate the fire procedures, uh, their policies, operational coordination, mass care services, operational communications and public health and EMS services. The exercise will include 26 agencies. That includes our local fire districts, CAL FIRE, the Sheriff Department, OES, hospitals, transit agencies, uh, public health, animal services, and all in joint with both counties. So um, we all have a seat at the table. The exercise will be sim a simulated uh, vegetation wildfire. It'll be in West Point area along the North Fork of McCallamy River between Skull Flat Road and West Point, and on the Cal that's on the Calaveras side, and then in Belden Mine Road um, in Pioneer on the Amador side. Um, we will be called upon for evacuations, Calaveras Transit, and then um, at some point there's a, what they call an inject, and that inject will be that we'll end up with a flat tire and we'll have a large group of people that are um, evacuated, being evacuated to Amador. So that'll pose some challenges, but it'll really bring home the fact that we need to be ready. 
And um, I think this is really going to give us a leg up. Any questions? And if you want to be actors and actresses, you're welcome to join. <laughs> so uh, just let us know. All right. Thanks. Can I come back? I left out the most important thing. I'd like to invite everyone to volunteer to work at the, um, the transit booth at the fair. Just give me a call, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to sign you up. Um, it's high energy work to, to stop the people milling by and um, tell them all about transit, find out what they're, you know, first you find out whether they're local. And uh, it's a great opportunity and we appreciate anyone that can give us an hour, two, three, all day, every day. <laughs> but um, just let me know. Thank you, Deborah. Okay. Item number 18, city report. Mr. Hannum. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a couple of things. The uh, first thing is, is that next Wednesday, uh, what is that, April 8th, or no, yeah, this is it next Wednesday, yeah. Uh, uh, the city is having their second public workshop for our partnership planning grant to look at alternatives and uh, move forward to that. So we look forward to a big turnout there. Uh, we are moving forward on our design with uh, Murphy's Grade. Now that we've got some in-house staff, we're, that it's actually taking off. And, uh, we're actually, I think, invoicing, doing another uh, request for authorization to Caltrans for some, for, for some reimbursement, so we're moving forward on that. Um, we're looking forward to get started on these new projects uh, once we uh, get it all approved and ready to go. Uh, and then finally, the um, last thing I had was... Uh, we're working with the county right now on our bus shelters uh, in the county so that now that they finished with that with the last group now we get to work with them on uh, on that so and we've been meeting with the county uh, to discuss transit stuff and so we, it's been a good uh, good working relationship between us <coughs> and um, and hopefully we can get those projects going and get those completed and uh, we're looking at a bus shelter at uh, at the trans our transfer area right around the chicken barn and we're looking at another bus shelter out by Capello, the Capello Apartments. Uh, there's a lot of people that ride transit out there that have to walk all the way to the transit station or have to flag the bus down. And so hopefully we can get a, uh, a bus shelter out there for those guys out there. So uh, we look forward to working with the county on that. And uh, that's all I have, unless you have any uh, questions about anything. All right. just, just a further comment, and sure. I was going to cover this during council. But Amber, do you have the ability to, to put this flyer on the screen? I saw it on the website. Yeah. And maybe the television camera could pick up on that <laughs> to uh, get do some more outreach to the public of this upcoming meeting. Anyway, that's all I had. Oh, okay, yeah. And once she has it up, I'll talk about it some more during kind of Yeah, we, we had a great turnout the first one, and um, I know we'll have a good turnout for this one, and um, mm -hmm. we're making good progress on that. So, okay, that's all. Right. Thank you, Dave. Um, Caltrans report. I think we have a uh, a pitch hitter for Mr. Gedney's this afternoon or evening. Carl Baker with Caltrans District 10. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and the board. Uh, first item is John Gedney has taken the executive director job with the ACTC. Oh. So if you want to go see him, you'll have to go next door and <laughs> go to their meetings. Um, I'm sure he'll be around to, to coordinate with you. Uh, number two was congratulations on the grants. Um, those are going to make a difference in your community. As uh, Executive Director Eads explained, uh, the projects that are planned are the projects that are easy to move into programming and onward into construction. And um, when, when I look at what we're getting done with the Angels Camp grant, uh, so far the partnership grant, things are, are looking really good. We've, we're looking at a long intractable problem uh, and, and numerous other community issues and getting a lot of feedback from the public and uh, making some progress all uh, 
at the same time coordinating between Caltrans and the COG in the city so that we're not leaving people out of the process that need to be included in order to actually get things moving in the end. Um, and the San Andreas grant uh, has a lot of potential to get some important things done for the city in terms of um, moving some of the things that, that came in under the previous grant, uh, a lot of the community active transportation issues, and also there's an area up by the airport uh, where the passing lane is on the south end of town where we're going to look at some access issues and hopefully make things happen to improve economic development in that area uh, where that area because of the passing lane we've had numerous development projects come in that area that that never really went anywhere because everybody has to build a turn pocket so if we can get everyone coordinated and figure out where the access comes from so that we can move forward in a, in a way that, that doesn't stop every single project, that's kind of what uh, the department hopes to see there uh, to, to move on with that. Number three was the, the uh, active transportation program call for projects has come out. Um, the city and uh, the county and numerous other agencies, uh, federal agencies, tribes, can apply for projects for active transportation. They can be planning, they can be construction. Planning is very limited to active transportation plans for economically disadvantaged communities, but that is also in there. But that's important money because it's construction money, money that can be used for construction. Um, the district is having a training for uh, agency staff, and I've got a, a flyer that I've given to the county. I'll give it to Dave also uh, for to make sure that we have the capability of getting the applications in and, and good, strong applications. It's all about you know being able to package your application and having all the information so that your applications are competitive. Um, number four, I, I gave um, Carly a stack of the mile marker, which is our Caltrans performance report. These will be coming out, I think they're quarterly. And um, it's worth taking some time to look at. The department is trying to be more responsive and uh, reporting on, on uh, what we're getting done. This, I know I didn't have enough for everybody, but um, this is available on our website, dot.ca.gov, or if you Google Caltrans, it's the first thing on there. And the mile marker is plastered across the top of the home page, so it's very available. Um, some of the things that are in here are, are essentially looking at performance measures for some of the key um, goals of the department. Um, and then another page that we had uh, was funding uh, gas tax alternatives. There's been a lot of discussion about how we um, move into the future when we keep getting better and better mileage and we get less and less gas tax to, to, um, to fund the roads. And then finally, while you're on that Caltrans homepage, if you go there, the um, California Transportation Plan comment period closes, I think, uh, April 17th. Uh, the California Transportation Plan is uh, in a, it's kind of like an RTP for uh, a regional agency. It's for the whole state, and because it's for the whole state, it's much broader in, in terms of not being about specific projects, but being about policies, about um, ways that Caltrans and uh, the state can, can move forward on their goals. So certainly that's worth looking at. Um, and uh, if anybody wants to comment, you can comment as a, as a council, although maybe, I don't know how you get it through a meeting at this point, but you can also <laughs> comment as individuals. So, and that's it for, unless someone has questions. Oh, I'm, 
By the way, I, I should say I'm interim. I'll be probably for two or three months um, until we have a permanent. So. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. One other comment. Um, I noticed in the papers they just released the CTC funding, and it looks like we're going to be having Highway 4 from the Stanislaus Calaveras County line to Angels Camp on Highway 4 resurfaced this year. About $5 million worth of uh, funding that was approved. Okay. That's news. <laughs> A lot of yes. times I hear these things, yeah. I, uh, so we, uh, we do have an opportunity to sit down with Caltrans on a quarterly basis, um, and we review with uh, district management the list of shop projects so that we could provide early coordination. So we are aware of the CTC allocation. Um, it's a shop project, it's a maintenance project uh, that they have on State Route 4. They also have a, a safety project at the Hunt Road and State Route 4 intersection to widen those areas. Um, so the district is very aware of where we are in terms of our planning on the wagon trail realignment. Uh, we're always talking with them about opportunities for coordination of these safety projects. Uh, the county at our last quarterly meeting did have an opportunity to talk to them about uh, these maintenance projects and if there was any way that we could have early coordination. So um, the county is aware and they are looking for those opportunities to maximize those current investments for much longer um, investments. Just in response to that, um, Please keep in mind, I've been working with the COG uh, at the staff level, so um, there's a great many things that uh, don't make it all the way down to staff. And, uh, <laughs> if you want to talk about gap closures, that's what I'll be working on for the next few months to try to catch up to some of the things that go on further up in the department. Thank you, Carl. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Congratulations. It's yeah, going to be great you. to work with you, Carl. Staff reports. Yeah. All right. I think I would just like to uh, quickly acknowledge uh, the work of Shirley Ryan and our city administrator, Michael McCadden. Um, I'm just grateful for their willingness to accommodate our study session um, before a joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors and the City Council. We know that they have their own workload, their own agendas, their own priorities on their board. So I'm grateful for their accommodation of this discussion, and I appreciate that opportunity for partnership. And I hope we're not more work for them. I hope we provide more of a long-term solution um, that helps the county and the transit system as it moves forward. So my sincere thanks to your CAO and your city administrator because I'm just grateful for their accommodation and their willingness to hear these COG issues and, and how they affect us. So um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to staff. I have no further uh, information to report. I have nothing to report. I was going to report on this meeting, but I think um, You're, <laughs> David, you Dave, and Wes <laughs> have that covered. But yeah, April 8th, um, we have our second public meeting for the State Route 449 Gateway Quarter Study in Angels Camp. It's at the um, Brat Hart Multi Purpose Room. And we have sandwich boards posted up around Angels Camp, and that actually worked last time. So hopefully, we get a good turnout. We have it on our Facebook page. Trying to promote through all avenues. Okay. Mr. Jones, okay. <coughs> Council reports. Mr. Hamminger? Nothing to report, thank you. Council Member Ponte? Um, I just want to reiterate the joint meeting. So it's April 28th at 3 o'clock. So we'll have our joint meeting, and then the Board of Supervisors will have their regular fourth Tuesday meeting following that. And uh, as we continue to meet in this particular room at this time frame, is there any way we could light the corridor so it's a little safer for our general public coming to these meetings? I think that would be most helpful. And um, I do want to, um, on, I know we're going to citizen member recruitment. I've had three in my particular district express an interest. I don't think the forms have come through just yet because um, they all had questions about what this Form 700 was <laughs> and what it meant. So uh, anyway, going over that information uh, with them. So hopefully that won't be discouraging. But uh, anyway, I am continue to look for citizen membership to this board because I think it's really important. Thank you, Dan. That's my friend. 
I was just going to give one more plug to what's on the overhead. Uh, I've had an opportunity to preview some of the content of, that's going to be presented at that, e that meeting, and it's very exciting. Uh, and we can have all the Caltrans experts and COG experts and city experts there, but we really need the public. We need public input. Uh, we need them to react to various alternatives and proposals, and that can only happen if they attend. Uh, the consultant that's hired is very good at engaging the public, and uh, they've got high-tech ways of doing that, and there'll be plenty of opportunities to get involved. Uh, in particular, I would hope uh, City of Angels Camp members uh, need to be present at that meeting. We had a good representation of county members, but this is Angels Camp city uh, residents, we need their input as well. And so again, I would encourage you all to, to come out. And since we're on daylight saving time, driving in the dark should not be an issue. <laughs> Hopefully uh, uh, the meeting will get done so everybody can get home before the sun goes down. Thank you. I just have one item. Uh, I want to thank again the council for supporting me to go to the COG conference in Monterey next week. And I'm looking forward to uh, attending that. Bring back some good information. At this time, uh, we'll go ahead and open. Actually, we're going to go into a closed session so we have the ability to uh, conference um, as a council with the labor negotiators of myself and Council Member Morris uh, regarding the uh, executive director uh, position. At this time, we'll go into a closed session.